Okay, so I've never done a video like this before and it feels kind of weird to do it in this case, but I felt like it kind of would be weird if I did it any other way. So um, yeah, I just wanted to kind of update everyone on YouTube um, about guts because some people don't follow me on Instagram and just kind of go over everything that kind of happened because it happened really fast. It was very confusing um, for me and for you guys, I'm sure. So I am kind of just going to go over that and I'm also going to go over some things that you guys as ferret owners can do to maybe prevent something like this. So uh, yeah. This is Oliver. Um, I am just trying to give him a ton of playtime and love and attention, and I always do that anyway, but definitely now because um, he has already lost one um, brother before, and it's really sad that he has to do that again. So, this is Oliver, and he's very sweet. He's very sweet. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna let him walk around now, so one sec. Okay, so I kind of wanted to go over guts in general first um, and kind of go, go on from there. So I got guts a little after um, Firo died. He, so Firo was a pet store ferret. I got him in 2011, I believe, and he, he wasn't too healthy from the from the get-go. He needed a splenectomy at three years old, and a few months after that, a little after he turned four, uh, I felt a mass in his uh, abdomen, and it was confirmed that it was attached to his kidney. So um, another thing about that was that he um, was anemic, and. So it, it was kind of assumed that this tumor was bleeding and he didn't have too much longer. Um, the vet gave me a few months and I had to put him down that next week. His bladder was really full, so it was looking like he couldn't fully empty it and he was losing some um, ability to, to, to walk with his back legs, which he was, you know, peeing on himself and it's just, it wasn't right. So. I had to make the decision to put him down at, unfortunately he was around four and it killed me. And I was like, okay, I'm never going to get a pet store ferret, a Marshall ferret again. So after Firo passed away, um, I wanted to get another mate for Oliver because he was gonna be alone and he was only two years old and he needed a friend and someone to play with. So. I searched around for breeders and I found the breeder that I got guts from and she is awesome. Um, her ferrets are beautiful. They have a properly shaped head. I, that sounds weird, but they have more of a, like a mink shaped head, you know, like more wide. And um, pet store ferrets, you notice their head is like really thin and long and that's not really gonna cause them any health problems, but it just shows that they're, they're, they're better bred and um, they're big and they're beautiful and they're very smart. And I know ferrets are smart already, but Guts was like another another level of smart. And it was almost to a fault, <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, and I told her my situation with Vero and she's told me from the get-go, you know, like she, she went into detail and you know, she's an ethical breeder. She doesn't inbreed, she, she does all the right things. Um, and you could tell, cause her ferrets are beautiful, but she told me that, you know, the reality is that these health issues, issues like insulinoma, adrenal disease, lymphoma, other cancers, things like that, are just so, they're so fused into the, the American ferret's DNA and Canadian ferret's DNA that um, it's kind of hard to breed out into, unless you get ferrets from the UK or Denmark or things like, you know, Europe. Um, European ferrets and what she does plan to do actually but yeah you know breeders can breeders will have to an extent healthier ferrets but these things like adrenal disease lymphoma cancers um, insulinoma these things can still pop up in well-bred 
and well-fed ferrets. So Guts is a perfect example of this, unfortunately. Throughout his entire life, up until two weeks ago, he was the healthiest ferret. I mean, he never had a problem, ever, in his entire life. He was never even slightly lethargic. Any day of his life, he, he had absolutely no problems, ever. I mean, he was the most playful, smartest, strongest ferret I have ever met in my life, and I've had a good amount of ferrets and known people who had ferrets, and so I've met a lot of ferrets, and um, he was just like another breed. Like, it truly felt like I had a mink. Like, he was, I don't know, he was just different from so many other ferrets that I've met, and you just tell that he was just strong and and smart <laughs> and healthy. I mean, that's just that's just what you got from it. Every every veterinarian that I went to, I mean, they they marveled over him. I have even taken him to a ferret show <laughs> before, um, which my bre my breeder kind of talked me into, and he won, I think, second or third place. He actually lost against his sister, but yeah. Um, he was just an awesome ferret. He was beautiful and, and smart. And um, two weeks ago, I noticed the second that I came home that he was acting strange and he was just lethargic and listless and just kind of wanted to go and hide, which was extremely unlike him. So I got freaked out at that very moment. Um, and I checked where he usually goes to the bathroom and there was a, like a green tinge to his urine, which also freaked me out, of course, um, because that made me think there's something wrong with his liver. So thankfully I work at a veterinary hospital and I just called them up and said, hey, I'm gonna bring guts up and I kind of really need him checked out. We did some, we did a urinalysis. Thankfully we got some pee there um, and it was green <laughs> for sure. And we did an x-ray and we got some blood which even in his lethargic, listless state, it still took four of us to hold him down for blood. And we didn't even get any, so we had to um, put him under for a few minutes and get some blood that way. Because unfortunately, my the veterinary hospital I work for, we don't often see ferrets, so I kind of wanted to do like the, uh, the baseline stuff, like blood work, x-ray, um, urinalysis there, and then bring him to a specialist, um, someone who sees ferrets, an exotic vet, after I got those results, so I can show show them. So we did that, your analysis was normal, x-ray was normal, and the blood work was pretty much normal. It just showed that he was um, anemic. And of course, I was like, what in the world? Like, he's not actively bleeding, there's no blood in his urine, there's no blood in his stool, he's eating fine still. Um, so that worried me, because I thought it was something internal. Um, so I called, the ferret veterinarian, they're about an hour away, and we got an appointment a few days later. And he did an ultrasound on guts and immediately found huge tumors. I mean, I, I, he could tell how many there were, but it, it was a huge mass on his liver. And he could see fluid around it, so there was some sort of fluid or blood, which made sense from the anemia. So blood was the tumor was bleeding into his abdomen pretty much um on and off which was very scary and sad and you know not something that i'd want him to deal with for a very long time which uh, the doctor told me that he probably had a month he told me that surgery he had maybe a 10 percent chance of survival and even then like the recovery was not going to be pretty so we did a prednisone injection and which should ha should you know it was to help slow the process and kind of make him feel a little bit better in that way but you know when i was on the phone with him and thinking about Firo and the same exact problem that i had with him at the same exact age guts is four and a half uh i was like a month okay so like a week. I didn't want to think that, but that's what came to my mind when he said that. So I brought Guts home, just gave him mice. His mice is his favorite thing to eat. I gave him all the mice he wanted. Um, that was the only thing he wanted to eat at that point. And he had a really good day on Sunday, which 
made me so happy. He was playful, he was active, he was happy. And I didn't think I'd see that in him later on, um, you know, from that point on. That made me really happy to see. Um, and then Monday, he started seeming lethargic again, and he didn't seem very interested in his mice anymore. So that bothered me too. I tried a bunch of different things. I gave him whole pieces of, you know, some of his favorite meats, hearts. He didn't care for it. I blended them into a soup, didn't care for it. So I was just like, okay, well, I obviously need to try one more thing. So on Tuesday morning, I got some uh, appetite stimulant medication um, to try. And when I came home, him and Oliver were laying together and I could tell that he had passed. Um, and it honestly wasn't very long after I got home, he was still warm and <sighs> yeah. Um, I was, I was in shock. I, I still am, like I can't believe it's, it, it happened so fast. So um, we did a necropsy on him and we're gonna send the, um, the tumor or the mass and um, a lymph node to Cornell, which is uh, per my breeder. My breeder really wanted to do this and she was kind enough to pay for it. So we're sending that out and we're gonna see, try and figure out what the heck this is. And yeah. So my advice to you um, who have ferrets, probably after the age of three, I would really recommend you doing an ultrasound on your ferret, which I know is kind of hard to do often because ultrasounds can be expensive. Um, but if you have a ferret, I really recommend doing that. Maybe once a year, honestly, probably more than once, I would say, because that is the only thing that we could have done to prevent this. Blood work didn't even show anything wrong. So, and an x-ray, the x-ray that we took, we didn't see anything from that. So I highly recommend doing blood work for other things and an ultrasound to see if there's any masses that you can get taken off early <laughs> so it doesn't turn into this. I wish I knew that. I mean, I guess, you know, I knew ferrets did get cancers and with Fero, you know, but it just wasn't, that wasn't on my radar at this age. He was just four and a half and I've, you know, there was nothing wrong with him, but this just goes to show you that, you know, ferrets in general already are very stoic and they're not gonna show that anything's wrong. So it's just in their best interest to get things like this done on a yearly basis, sometimes maybe more if they're older. Um, you know, Guts is four and a half and this happened. So I would honestly start at three years old and just monitor them and check blood work um, and ultrasound because that's, that's what's gonna tell you if anything's wrong and you can catch it early on because uh, if I did catch this early on, we could have done surgery and removed it. Now, whether or not this could have metastasized still and came back a year or so later, you know, you don't know. But uh, this is why you really do need a savings account for your animals, um, for things like this, especially if you have ferrets, because more often than not, especially in the United States, you're gonna see this in your ferrets. So that is my advice to you. And I kind of also wanted to showcase Guts because many people who follow me on here don't really know him very well because I hardly even got to introduce him on here. I did have an Instagram for them, or I still do, um, Guts underscore Oliver, and I posted a ton on there for a few years since I got him. So people who follow me from there know him, but I just kind of wanted to talk about him on here and post some videos of him just kind of in remembrance and just show you how beautiful and awesome he was because he was a great ferret. So thank you. Again, I don't really know how to end this because I've never really done a video like this before, but thank you so much for all the encouragement and 
love that you've given me since I started this. And thank you so much for just all the comments and, and, and concerns with guts over these past few weeks. It's meant a lot to me and it's, it's helped me kind of cope with everything. Uh, it's kind of hard to show much emotion on camera, but yeah, it's very, it's very unfortunate. And, and I just hope that this doesn't happen to your ferrets because it's, it's, it's awful. So thank you again. And I will probably show some clips of guts being cute. I hope you enjoy it.